What's up, YouTube? My name's Quickie. Welcome back to the channel. Um, we just, we, I've got a load of deliveries and stuff that's coming today. That's all rubbish. Eat and go. I've had loads of stuff turn up. So we've got a couple of relays for the back. One was the um, fuel warning level. Um, I can't remember what the other one did now. <laughs> Also got a starter solenoid, so he's in there. Uh, a couple of bleed nipples, just because these is nasty. Don't like them. And I've got a complete fairing fixing kit. For a ZZR 1100 1990. <laughs> we'll see. There's always stuff missing out of these. <laughs> Either that or I'm putting them together wrong. And I've also got this. Which, um, there's a fella called Gary York, he got in touch. Um, that was after the video where we were sinking carbs and using them gauges up there. I wasn't having a very good time, but he got in touch saying that he's got a Morgan carb tune. He's had it sitting in his garage for 10 years and he's never used it. Do I want it? <laughs> yes, please. Look at that. It's a nice antique box as well. Um, but these are brilliant, it's like a common one and it's got like a, I thought it was mercury, mercury but it's not, it's like a metal slug that goes in here. Um, we've got all the connectors and stuff, that's cool, plus the hosing and all that, and the book of words, which is sweet, but that is going to be way better than that is. So at some point we're going to stick these on just to see how close we did get it with the gauges. I'm hoping we're not far off, but these are supposed to be brilliant. Like, really, really, really accurate. So that's what we'll be using. But thank you, Gary, that is very cool of you, mate. I know you're not using it and you haven't done ever, but um, to send it my way is a very kind thing. So thank you very much, mate. I need to get a proper box for that, don't I? What have I got? Um, this stupid caliper finally came apart. Basically, I took it into work and had a chat with my mate. Um, and he's got a little tool that he made which is really really good they're just trashed um, he's got a really good little tool that he made so the banjo fitting I think is a 10 mil by 1 mil pitch so he's made up a fitting that screws in here and basically you get an airline connector on the other end so you can hook it straight up to an airline which means you get maximum sort of pressure in there rather than wrapping tape around the what did I do there you go sticking tape around the edge of your air gun and trying to seal it that way um, it did not want to come out at all um, and this was the culprit so we ended up you know with the airline on I think there's about 10 bar of pressure in there we was like tapping in this out sort of in various places with a hammer and punch and eventually it went but these pistons is knackered I mean we didn't do it any favors at all but that's knackered and if you look inside um, uh, where are you Ooh, you're all a bit zoomed in and stuff you can see how the the seals have like split and rolled over. So essentially you're trying to, you know, force it through something that ain't even there and it's just, it's not good. So I do have a service kit in this one. So that one's going to get robbed and this one's going to get rebuilt. But first I want to, um, I'm going to give it a clean. I'm going to give it a squirt of something black. Um, just, you know, because it looks ropey as at the minute. So... Um, we'll fish all this lot out. Not that there's much left to fish out. <laughs> it's just split right down the middle. Look. Weird. Never seen that before. Oh, and there isn't a seal ring in there. Just lots of crud and crust. There's not a seal ring in either of them, actually. Right, okay. Well, we'll fish all this lot out. We'll shove it through the ultrasonic um, cleaner. And we'll probably leave it in there for quite a while. Uh, no, 10 mil. So we'll get all this lot cleaned up. And I can rub the bits out of that one. Replace the nasty bits in this one and we should be good. Um, I will be giving it a coat of paint. Black. <laughs> no, not tough black.
Right, well that sucked. <laughs> Sam came back from holiday, as she had, um, she had, she had gotten COVID. So she's been off work doing the isolation thing. Jake's not been at home, he's been at his dad's. So I've just been sat there waiting to get it, basically. Um, sure enough, it happened. <laughs> it's horrible, I don't want it again. <laughs> I'm still chesty and everything else. For those that haven't had it, it's, it's like flu, um, and she's proper snotty and everything else. I, got, I had all the flu stuff, you know, the aches and pains, the shivers, the hot and cold, the no energy, everything aching, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I didn't have the snot, whereas she did. <laughs> but there you go, it's what it is, there's nothing you can do. So, I've just come out of isolation, which is cool. I'm back at my work tomorrow, which is fine. Um, and in the meanwhile, whilst I've been at home, I've been limited on what I could do. Because obviously I can't come in here, because if anybody sees the van outside, you know, people are always sticking the neck in, just for a chin wag and all that sort of stuff. So I've just, I've just stayed at home. I did take the calipers back, uh, and I have been busy. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but now I'm just sorting my nuts and bolts and stuff out. So... I've had all the calipers apart. Let's just get rid of that. There we go. So I've had all the calipers apart. I've got service kits and stuff for everything. The rear I've got to rob off that one. Um, and I've got replacement caliper bolts. The only ones that I didn't have were these ones, which, um, where are you? So these are the ones that actually clamp the two halves of the front calipers together. Um, it's like a button head, torx head sort of jobby thing. Um, and they were a bit rusty and I can't get any. Fowlers ain't got any and stuff. I could just go for like stainless whatever's the same size and that, which I probably will do if I can't get them. But I thought I'll clean them up. Um, trouble is putting them on the scotch bright wheel, that's gonna take like the surface layer and all that sort of stuff off the zinc off. So I've cleaned them up and all I'm gonna do is blue them. That'll, it's not perfect. It is a layer of rust protection, I get that, but they're not going to have to be in there that long because I am going to get some more. So, the idea is, um, he should be on. Um, I've just cleaned them all in acid time. Let's just dry it all off, so that's all good. And then here, I've just got some uh, cold blue stuff. Um, where is it? What have we done with it? This stuff. Um, where are we? Philips Professional Cold Blue for metal parts and accessories. Um, I think they use all this stuff on guns and whatnot. I don't know, I think it's something like that. Um, I certainly use it when I'm making tooling for the fly press and stuff, you know, the, the lathe and all that sort of stuff. Um, I tend to blue everything just because it does help things to not rust. It's not brilliant. Um, but it certainly helps and it will keep these going for long enough. So it's a 50-50 mix of that and water. You clean everything in acetone. I'm not supposed to be touching it with my fingers, but I don't really care. <laughs> You're not going to be in there that long. Um, and then basically you just dunk it in that for a few minutes. And it basically goes black. Um, takes about, I don't know, three or four minutes or something, just for it to, you know, properly do the do. And then you rinse it off with fresh water, which I'll have to go and get. 
and then you just dunk it in any oil, any oil, it doesn't matter. It could be three in one, it could be gearbox, or it could be anything. Um, but the oil, as I understand it, kind of goes into the layer that the blue inputs on. And it just gives a level of protection, basically. It also goes black. I don't know why, but it goes black. bit that obviously I've had on a scotch bite that's that's all gone dark this bit here is lighter and then the threads is dark so I can only assume that where the where I've took the zinc coating off with a scotch bite so it's down to bare steel that's where it's gone black and obviously where the threads engage that's going to take the coatings and stuff off anyway because it's always the threads that rust and the bit in the middle where the zinc still is they haven't really took it but anyway they'll do that's fine right let's have a a tidy up and then we can get on with the calipers. Right, so calipers, they're about the only thing I could do in isolation. <laughs> so they've been cleaned up and they've been given a squirt of something blick. Um, so that's all fine, just like masked off all the pistons and the, you know, the galleries and all that sort of stuff. So we'll have all those, that tape and stuff off and we can start to rebuild these. I've got a service kit here. Um, so that should all be peachy. Are you in here? What's that? Master cylinder. Oh yeah, the master cylinder. Um, oh actually we can come on to that in a bit. Um, where's my kit? Some of them, some of them, plenty of them, and some of that. Right, so let's get these front ones put back together again. Thank you. 
So that's all done, they're all back together again, which is cool. And I'm losing my voice. <laughs> um, got some nice new stainless bolts and stuff to bolt all the calipers back on with, but I do need to make some dewickies just to sleeve it out and stuff. Um, these pistons were shot. Yeah. Nasty as. So we've got nice stainless ones in the rear as well. So they're junk, he's junk, because a bit's broken off. So we can go in the bin, which I need to empty. <laughs> right, and then we come down the master cylinder. So this thing was a proper pig, proper pig. We'll have you in a minute. Um, we did eventually get it apart. Basically, I took it into work um, and this piston was seized in there, something absolutely fierce, just could not get the bugger shifted. Tried everything, tried, uh, stuck it in a vice, soaked it in WD-40 and whatnot. That didn't help at all. We tried heating it up, tried hitting it, I've tried, you know, shoving air down it and all sorts of stuff. So I took it in work for a few ideas and one of the fellas took it away and he managed to get it apart. And the way he did it was he, he had a, a thing that he made that I'm gonna have to make because it was, it just, it worked a trick. But the, um, basically it's a little tube um, and he just put a, a thread on one end. I think it's a 10 by one, which is, an, you know, for the banjo. I think it's a 10 by, it's something like that anyway. But that tube screws into the banjo fitting and then it's just a barb end that you can, hook, you know, put a, um, a high pressure air line on. So you get a really, really, really good seal and a combination of pumping 10 bar of air in and just tapping it all round with a hammer, eventually the thing shifted. Um, there is some corrosion and muck and goo and nasty and all sorts of stuff. And it is pretty solid as well because you can scrape it off and it kind of cracks as you do it. So the piston's absolutely toast. But now we've got it apart, we can rebuild this as well. And then we is in. We sorted. So, where's my kit? Um, I've got a little repair kit, so we'll get this put back together again, which you've seen a hundred times before, you probably don't need to see this. <laughs> There's loads of videos doing this. Another pot of red goo. I'm getting quite the collection of them. Right, so all that was clean. Right, okay, what have we got in here? So new piston, spring, circlip, a new boot and a cap. Ideal. Where's my scissors? So that's that then. Um, I do have a set of these cheap, nasty, you know, the circlip things, circlip pliers where you can pull the pin out and you can make this jaw internal or external or change it for a bent one or a slightly bent one or whatever. Um, and they're rubbish just because the ends all wobble about and they're just junk. So I actually borrowed this set off Jack next door. They're good, really, really, really good for doing the um, master cylinder circlips because it's like buried in the housing and you need sort of quite a, a long reach at 90 degrees. So these are ideal. Um, 
I do have a rule. I can't remember who I picked it up off, but they, they, they said they had a rule as well. Whereas if you need a tool more than two times, just go out and get one. So that's what I've done. I've got to get a set of these on order. Um, and they're going to be dead handy. It's all right, I've only got a cheap set. <laughs> Natch. Um, okay, we've got some new bolts to go into the, the calipers. Um, these are all stainless, just cap heads and whatnot. Um, but these are Jixa um, calipers, not ZZR calipers. Um, the originals took an M10 bolt, these take an M8. So um, the hole that obviously goes through the fork leg and everything else is going to be too big. So I need to make some doickies. Um, and I have been playing and I made this. So essentially that goes in from the, the back side and the caliper bolts onto the front side, if that makes sense. Um, it has got a shoulder to it because the spacing is very slightly off and it's almost, you know, it's just like the thickness of a washer. If I need to skin it down a little bit more, I can do. Um, I need to make that diameter 20 mil, not 25. Um, but that will do the do. And it, it just means that when I put the bolts through from this side, you know, they're not going to slop about or anything. It, you know, just takes up out all, all the wiggle out of it. So I need to make another three of them and skin that one down a little bit as well. Right, chuck. So these are all done. It's literally just like a little top out spacer sort of thing. So the idea is, is it shrinks the 10 mil hole down to eight mil um, and just gives me a surface on here just to move the calipers in a tiny bit because they, they are just a little bit off. It's weird, one side was slightly different to the other, but you know, there you go. So that's them. So, Give him a clean up. Are you going to go in? Yes. All right, so he's in there. They sit just back a little bit from this face. So when the nut goes, the, the bolt goes in, it should all clamp up quite nicely. Um, 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 are you that side? Yes. OK, 
Come on. Right then, so, my little doohickey jobby thing goes in the back of the, the fork leg, where basically between the fork and the caliper, just because I've got this one mil sort of shoulder to it. So I just want to move the caliper that way by about a mil. Um, the other thing I'm doing is just putting a washer on underneath the cap head. Ordinarily you wouldn't bother, but these holes in the fork leg is expecting a 10 mil thread. These are eight mil, so the, the cap head is a little bit on the smaller side as well, but these washers fit in a treatlet. Just like that. So they'll help spread the load, um, which is all cool. And with a little bit of luck, a little bit of luck, if my measuring was right, this caliper should be smack over the top of the disc. So before the caliper was too far to the outside. So if you was to look at the where the disc was sitting in the casting, there's where's the other one? You've got this channel here. Um, obviously the disc runs in to get through to the pads, but the thing is it was offset one way. Is it, it wasn't a much, it's only a mil, I get that, but it wasn't smack in the middle, so, <laughs> and I want it smack in the middle. Right, we need to talk those up in a minute. How are we doing? Ideal. I'll get a picture of that and show you. Um, right, let's get the other one done. Right, so that's it, done. We're nearly done. <laughs> nearly done. Um, so the calipers have all been stripped, cleaned, painted, rebuilt with a service kit. They're all back on the bike, all my lines is in. Um, copper washes everywhere is all new. Um, I've gone through and I've done up the pinch bolts that hold the two caliper halves together, so that's all nice and tight. 25 foot pounds. I don't, I don't know, I can't remember if I said Newton meters, but it's 25 foot pounds of torque for the mounting bolts. And it's all in, I've just got to bleed it, which I ain't got time to do today because it's gone five. I need to tip off with my tea. <laughs> or it's going to be in the dog. Um, I've got a bit of a funny with the clutch. It don't feel right. The lever doesn't go all the way back. So there's something funny going on there. I need to have a look into that and see what's what. But otherwise, it's just a case of bleeding all this lot up and I should have working brakes again, which is peachy. So I'll have a look at all that tomorrow and get that lot done before I go to my work. Um, next bit, I believe, well, there's a couple of silly little jobs. It's like the hugger is just rubbing on the tyre, so I need to heat that up with a heat gun and just reshape it a bit so it clears the tire nicely. That should be fairly quick and easy. Um, I want to go through the wiring, just make sure everything is as it should be and everything works. I've got a couple of dodgy bulbs to replace. But just go through and check all the wiring. Um, and now I can start on bodywork basically. So lots and lots and lots of rubbing down to get ready for Jack. He has been warned it's coming his way. Um, he's even been told what colour it is, so hopefully he's getting that ordered. But anyway, that's where I'm leaving it for this one. Thank you ever so much for watching. Do hope you're well and staying safe. We'll see you on the next one. Laters! <laughs>